as the skies above it changes, the earth shakes, volcanoes reawake, and air and water bodies are also acting anomalously and disastrously. Hi guys, it's Tracy here at Xcyan, and Cyan has recently coined a completely new natural disaster called Rainbow. Basically, it's a burst of downpour which happens when a cool heavy column of air sinks suddenly in the middle of the storm. This downdrop pulls the water droplets down with it with tremendous force. The effects of climate change has caused the upper atmosphere to warm to the degree that it holds much more moisture which builds up until it meets cold dry air, creating a massive and unstable system. Hawaii was hit with this phenomenon on the 14th and 15th of April this year, resulting in the flooding of the botanical gardens of the Hanadi Valley. These places were shut out and the consequences were closely monitored because three regions are home to the species of plants and animals that are found nowhere else on the planet. Another strange water phenomenon earlier this year is the anomalous tidal patterns in South America. There was a historical retreating of waters along the coast of South America on the side of the Atlantic Ocean in Brazil and Uruguay, and simultaneously the crossing of waters into the shores along the Pacific coast of Chile and at the western edges of the continent.
Now moving a little bit back into the past and we arrive at the record low water level of the Mississippi River in October 2017. Now a lot of you might have not heard of this event because it did not receive a lot of media coverage but we understand because that is exactly what media do driving our attention away from the harbingers of Judgment Day. But anyway, last October, in the areas of New Mandarin Seismic Zone, the river became extremely swollen, with many regions becoming dry. In fact, a whole 130 miles straight of the Mississippi, from Tennessee to the northwest of the state of Mississippi, was so low that barges was not able to ship goggles to the region. The water level was as low as 7 feet and that broke the records of swallowing it in the Mississippi in the recorded history. So just for your information, the lowest ever recorded before that was 10.73 feet and that was all the way back to July of 1988. Here is where it got stranger. A few days before the water got this low, there had been three earthquakes within a short 10 hours. So the question here is, could these seismic activities be the cause for the water disappearing? Because there are hypotheses saying that waters are seeping through the cracks or are pushed somewhere else as a result of these earthquakes. That there are also another possible explanation which is a severe drought in the central valley. Whatever the explanation, the simultaneous drought and earthquakes and retrievals of waters indicate that something out there is going through dramatic changes. You also need to know that just a few months before this record low, the Mississippi went through what could have been considered a historical flood flooding which affected six states, Missouri, Arkansas, Indiana, Oklahoma, Illinois, and Louisiana. Now I'll show you this brief news outlet which reported the flood last April and May, so you can see how extreme the phenomenon was, and remember that it went through this extreme high almost immediately before the extreme low. The point is that the earth is going through an upheaval. But anyway, I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes and here's the news footage. April 25th and notice all the greenery. I want you to focus in these black areas. This is the Mississippi River. So mm -hmm. those are bodies of water where you see the black on the map. That's right. Now let's advance to what it looks like now. And you're going to see that area just expand. Look at all that. Down here at Pocahontas where we had the levee breach, Poplar Bluff. Look at all that blue. That all just mm -hmm. fills in. Check out this on Highway 21. This is what it looks like normally. And let's go ahead and advance and show you. Look at that. So all that water spilling in right in between. When you watch the flooding, it's all the water pouring in just between. Oh the two there. And so we took you back more than seven days now because this is the third round of rain yeah. that we're dealing with and over the last two weeks more rain is in the forecast. We've been looking at it all week long. Now some of these places in the flood zones we're starting to see levee breaches numerous ones we had yesterday. They're looking at 10 plus inches of rain over the past seven days. Over 100 river gauges have flooded along the Mississippi, Missouri and Arkansas rivers. This is the area that will continue to have problems with flooding. And I do want to make a note, the major rivers such as the Missouri and the Mississippi, we're going to continue to have flooding along those rivers for weeks. Now let's go back to the earthquakes. If you guys have been following us recently, you guys would have known that scientists are saying that the areas of the American West Coast is overdue for mega earthquakes of magnitude 9 or greater. The reason is because the oceanic plate is slipping under the North American plate and is being pressed like a spring. And whether it gets sardos or, or spring like, it will create an earthquake and tsunami so big that many parts of America will be hit within only 15 minutes, not to mention the nearby super volcano Yellowstone, which would immediately kill almost 90,000 people if it's erupt. 
Now what do I mean by the areas is overdue? Chris Goinger, earthquake geologist at the Oregon State University and his colleagues have been collecting core samples of sediments in the ocean for 25 years. They calculated that a mega earthquake will happen periodically and the average interval is 240 years. The last major Cascadian earthquakes was already 350 years ago and according to the scientists, in all of humans' modern history, the Earth has not experienced anything like this multitude 9 earthquake. America is not the only place where seismic activities are acting up. In fact, the whole planet is being shook. If you visit the website earthquakecheck.com, you'll be surprised to discover that a staggering number of almost 21,500 earthquakes have hit the earth in the past 30 days. That's more than 700 a day. If you compare this number to that of the periods of May 2016, which was 3,000, the number has increased by a shocking 7 times. In July, when Kilauea of Hawaii was erupting, a record 800 earthquake per day was recorded on Hawaii's Big Iceland. Now the largest earthquakes in the last years were the one in Chiapas, Mexico. If you still remember, this earthquake hit Mexico on September 8 of 1917. It was magnitude 8.1 at the center and 7.1 in Mexico. Now watch just videos of how horrible it was. Do you see how the building almost collapsed and how the metal flagpole shook? There was 370 casualties in total. A bit further back into the past and you probably still remember the magnitude 6.7 earthquake that hit Ecuador in April 2016. Michael, so powerful that it remained a hurricane for 12 hours after making landfall in Mexico Beach, thrashed the Carolinas and Virginia and was growing stronger again over the Atlantic, where the National Hurricane Center predicted it would eventually menace Britain with tropical storm force winds. Authorities reported 11 deaths as of Friday, with Virginia's state medical examiner ruled four drownings and the firefighters' death were storm-related. High winds, downed trees, streets inundated with rising waters and multiple rescues of motorists from waterlogged cars played out in spots around Virginia and neighbouring North Carolina. Linda Marquardt and her husband somehow survived the very worst of it in Mexico Beach, 
where Hurricane Michael's eye passed directly over their home. Surging water filled their first floor, now muddied and ruined. They're surrounded now by devastation. Fishing boats and cars tossed like toys. Empty slabs where people hopefully escaped before their houses exploded in 155 mile per hour winds and were washed away by the storm surge. Row after row of beachfront homes were obliterated by the epic Category 4 storm. The destruction along Florida's white sand northern Gulf Coast was catastrophic. Officials predicted rebuilding costs in the billions. In an interview with Reuters, Crowdsource Rescue co-founder Matt Marchetti said that at least 1,135 Floridians were still unaccounted for. However, many of these still listed as missing could be with friends or family elsewhere, or they might have fled the storm and didn't contact loved ones to inform them of their whereabouts, the report added. At least 34 deaths have been blamed on the powerful storm. 24 in Florida, 3 in North Carolina, 1 in Georgia and 6 in Virginia. However, Hurricane Michael is a short-term concern for Florida. What is more serious are the bad effects, especially environmental concerns. Dead fish appeared everywhere. What is worse is a mega mosquito outbreak. They are galley nippers. Their presence has prompted the governor of North Carolina to put appropriate millions of dollars to combat the invading swarms. Mosquitoes size is very aggressive quickly falling on their prey, both in daylight and in the evening. The bite of this type of mosquito is really intense. This means that it will cause big trouble to the body of those who get bitten. The invasion of it is a serious concern for all the health of the victims in particular and those residents in general. As climate change continues to worsen, the outbreak will become a huge concern across the globe. This leads to new epidemics. In brief, Hurricane Michael is a catastrophic event that alerts safety of the world. According to the National Weather Service office in Tallahassee, Florida, 
it could be the strongest hurricane ever to have made landfall along the stretch. Twin disaster in Indonesia. A powerful earthquake triggered a deadly tsunami that unleashed waves as high as 20 feet on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi. The death toll stands at nearly 1,000 as of September 30th, with confirmed fatalities coming from the hard-hit city of Palu. Many victims were found along the shorelines because of the tsunami, but the number of dead is still unknown. Unfortunately, the disaster happened when people were still on the beach and did not realize what was coming, and therefore they became victims. The tsunami didn't come by itself. It dragged cars, buses, logged and houses along with it. It hit virtually everything situated on land. Thousands of people were taking part in a beach festival in Palu when the tsunami struck without warning at dusk on Friday, September 28th. Hospitals damaged by the magnitude 7.5 earthquake were overwhelmed with injured survivors. Palu, which has more than 380,000 residents, was strewn with debris from the earthquake and from the subsequent tsunami. Indonesian TV showed dramatic smartphone footage of the powerful wave hitting Palu, with people screaming and running in fear as waves hit as high as 20 feet began to rush towards the shore. The raging water smashed into buildings and structures along the coastline. The situation was chaotic. People were running for their lives while buildings collapsed around them. Roads leading in and out of Palu buckled and cracked. There were reports that some people were attempting to climb trees to a height of 20 feet to escape the crushing tsunami. Search efforts are largely being made by hand as the heavy equipment required to move the rubble has not yet reached affected areas. According to reports from Meteorology, Climatology and Geophysics Agency, BMKG, they claimed that they were completely blind about the tsunami after the strong earthquake hit Dongola, Palu, Sigi and the surrounding areas. It is unclear whether the tsunami occurred before or after the warning had been lifted. Zorba Cyclone a very rare cyclone named Zorba developed in the southern Mediterranean Sea in late September, before lashing Greece on September 30th, with wind speeds approaching hurricane strength. These types of storms, which usually happen near the equator, are expanding into the northern latitudes. As the Earth's climate continues to worsen and temperatures continue to rise, the more likely the storm of this magnitude will develop in these areas. The tropical storm created tremendous street flooding in parts of southern Greece. Boats anchored in the port of Epidaurus, Greece, were seen smashing against the sea wall as large waves came ashore. Something very mysterious and still mostly unknown is happening in Greenland. 
the ice sheets are turning a pinkish red and are contributing to the overall melting of one of the most prominent frozen bodies of water on the face of the earth. But the discoloration is not limited to the Arctic phenomenon. It is becoming a global occurrence. It is an increasing problem that is showing up in the Alpine and the Himalayan glaciers. And it is also happening in Antarctica. Here is the underlying dilemma the scientists are faced with when defining unexplained phenomena. It has been stated that the warming temperatures are a contributing factor to the polar melt. But this is only one of many factors that may be a contributor to ice melt. Therefore, it is crucial to understand all of the elements, all of the drivers of glacial and polar ice melt. One of these drivers is said to be algae blooms, which appear to be darkening the Greenland ice each summer. The algae produce biological sunscreen molecules that protect them from the sun. The darker surface lowers the ability to reflect the sunlight back into space, and that results in more light being absorbed and therefore more melting. More heat means more meltwater and also more room for algae to grow. This causes the ice to get darker and leads to further melting. The Greenland ice sheet is the largest land-based piece of ice in the northern hemisphere. Each year it is losing hundreds of billions of tons of ice. If the entire ice sheet were to melt, it would add an additional 20 feet to a slowly rising sea. The Irish Aviation Authority has now launched an investigation into the appearance of the unidentified flying object that was sighted by pilots over the southwest coast. What makes the incident more credible than regular UFO sightings is that it was reported by several experienced commercial pilots flying at very high altitudes on scheduled flights. A British Airways pilot, flight BA-94, recorded the first sighting from Montreal to Heathrow. The pilot described seeing an object coming up along the left-hand side of her aircraft before it rapidly veered to the north. The pilot said her plane and the object were not on a collision course but she was wondering what it could be. She then radioed into Shannon Air Traffic Control, inquiring if there were any military exercises taking place in the skies over the Irish coast. It was moving so fast, she said. After the few seconds to check the screens for other crafts in the area, the controller replied that nothing is showing on either primary or secondary radar. A Virgin Airlines pilot told air traffic controllers that the objects were at their 11 o'clock position, with two bright lights which seemed to climb away at high speeds. He added that the speed of the UFO was astronomical, like a Mach 2, twice the speed of sound, around 2,500 kph. An air traffic controller responded saying they would investigate further as their other aircrafts had reported similar sightings. A third commercial airliner, a Norwegian Air 737, travelling from New York to Shannon, also joined in the radio conversation. One of the pilots appeared relieved that he wasn't the only one who would witness the UFOs, saying glad it wasn't just him who saw the strange things. 
in the IAA's report, they confirmed that they would investigate furthermore into the sightings matter. We will keep you updated, so stay tuned. An earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 4.2 rattled Anchorage at 5.04 p.m. Sunday, the biggest aftershock to hit the area in about a week. The Alaska Earthquake Center said that the quake was centered 19 miles northwest of Anchorage in the Big Lake area. Since the 7.0 earthquake that caused widespread damage in Anchorage on November 30th, at least 4,000 aftershocks have been recorded, according to the Earthquake Center. Most have been too small to feel, but at least two dozen have been larger than 4.0, according to the Earthquake Center. The last aftershock of magnitude 4.0 or higher to originate in the same area was a 4.8 shaker the morning of December 9th, according to the center. Aftershocks are regular after tectonic earthquakes, seismologists say. For an earthquake of this size, we expect the aftershocks to continue for a few months, Natalia Rupert of the Alaska Earthquake Center has said. The rate of the aftershocks, however, will be going down with time. Also, a state energy specialist is encouraging those affected by last month's earthquake in south-central Alaska to retest their homes for radon. Radon is an odorless gas that has been linked to cancer. It is formed when uranium underground decays. Art Nash is a state energy specialist at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. He tells the Anchorage Daily News that under normal circumstances, he would recommend homeowners to test for radon every five years. But he says that when the ground is disturbed, it can create fissures that allow radon to escape into the air. A new video gives a bird's eye view of an ancient lake that NASA's next Mars rover will scour for signs of long dead life. Last month, NASA officials announced that the 2020 Mars rover would touch down inside the 28 mile wide Yezero crater, which lies about 19 degrees north of the red planet's equator. Yezero hosted a deep lake the size of Lake Tahoe long ago when the red planet was a warmer and wetter place, which explains why the six-wheeled robot is going there. An ancient lake is a fantastic place to pursue our goal of looking for possible Martian life, Mars 2020 project scientist Ken Farley of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory said in the flyover video which was constructed using imagery collected by Mars orbiters and released Thursday on December 13th. On Earth, lakes are filled with living creatures. Evidence of that life is often preserved in the mud and sand deposited on the bottom of the lake. He added, so we'll use the rover's instruments to explore the rock of the ancient lake bed. The current plan calls for a car-sized Mars 2020 to land near the rim of Yezero, which was blasted out by an ancient impact, Farley said. The six-wheeled robot will work its way over a nearby delta, which preserves sediments that were delivered to the ancient lake by a river. The rover will likely then trundle over to explore the ancient lake's shoreline, navigating its way along present-day dunes to get there. After that, the mission team plans to explore the rocks of Yezero's rim. These rocks would have been hot shortly after the impact and may have hosted hot springs, Farley said. Deposits from these springs would be another great target in our search for possible ancient life on Mars. Mars 2020 
is currently scheduled to launch in July of 2020 and touch down in February of 2021. The robot's body is based heavily on that of NASA's Curiosity rover, which has been exploring the 96-mile-wide Gale Crater since August 2012. Like Curiosity, Mars 2020, which will get a more original and inspiring name before the launch, will land with the aid of a rocket-powered sky crane. This device will lower the heavy rover into Yehero's floor on cables and then fly off and crash land in a safe distance intentionally away. Mars 2020 will carry seven scientific instruments, including ground penetrating radar, high resolution cameras and several spectrometers. The rover will also tote both a mini helicopter which will serve as a scout and a technology demonstration that will generate oxygen from the carbon dioxide dominated Martian air. This later gear would help pave the way for human exploration on the Red Planet, NASA's officials have said. Mars 2020 will also catch samples for eventual return to Earth, though there is no mission currently on NASA's books to grab this material. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to catch up with the newest information about the Red Planet. Thank you for watching SpaceX.